how is Los Angeles different from New York? You live in Los Angeles yeah. now. It's not a focus of your study. It's Purpose. the focus of my next study, though, so stay tuned. <laughs> yeah, we, we will. But how, how, how is New York different? From they are very different geographically. I will say for Los Angeles, there was an excellent article in the New York Times a couple months ago about Los Angeles' art scene and how the art's there, but no one really realizes that. So it's a perception issue. And as someone who lives in Los Angeles, I would agree with that. Los Angeles has a thriving art scene. It has an up-and-coming fashion industry. Um, you know, it, it has LA Fashion Week, which is somewhat scoffed at by the larger, you know, fashion weeks like New York and Milan. But it's certainly it's it's legitimate in its own right, uh, and it produces some some pretty uh, impressive designers. Uh, so it's definitely there. But how it interacts, uh, and how well how these different inter industries interact with each other compared to New York. Uh, is different, and um, you know, while I'm I'm really kind of in the preliminary uh, parts of my study of Los Angeles, uh, one of the things that is very very salient is the fact that Los Angeles has a vastly different geography than New York. Why is that important? That's important because a lot of the spontaneous, ad hoc, informal interactions that are so important to the creative economy in New York happen because everyone's on foot and everyone's in the same place. So if you, even, if you even think about scenes, for example. So in New York, you may be part of some hipster music scene, and you may be utterly highbrow. And you know, you're, the places you're going to go may actually be on the same block. And you're almost forced to interact with each other. In Los Angeles, I, re I remember several months ago, I was at um, this DJ night uh, at, this, at this Mexican um, bar restaurant in downtown Los Angeles called La Cita, where this uh, artist Shepard Ferry uh, DJs on I think it's Thursday nights and I was there and uh, you know there was it was quite an interesting scene uh, and there were uh, you know lots of hipsters there and 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 people who were supportive of Shepard Ferry and 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 actually in and some of the, the the Mexicans who go this is their local bar uh, so and, and I, I remember thinking there that that you know, all the way over in West Hollywood was the high-end sort of Lindsay Lohan Paris Hilton scene, and you know that was several miles away. And these scenes would never collide unless somebody bothered to cross over, like got in their car and, and drove. And so the geography of Los Angeles being so, you know, vast and so driven by the automobile, quite literally, uh, that that makes it almost a it makes it impossible for the same kinds of dynamics to occur that do in New York. That's not to say, though, that other dynamics don't occur. Because obviously, Los Angeles is a very important and uh, you know, effective cultural hub in its own right. But it's, it's definitely different. And, and the geography plays a huge role in this, because people have to interact with their environment very differently. And, and they're less, they have to make, I believe, a more proactive effort to engage one another. I think this sort of leads us not inelegantly into sort of the the into the uh, you know the, the the last section of your book, and that's um, you know w what municipalities could do, what New York could do, okay. what kind of policy New York could enact to, um, to 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 make the city more congenial. Like the the obvious thing is, if this is truly an organic scene that, in many ways, happened by itself up until this point. Is policy going to actually thwart it, or is it going to help it? And I suppose for me, and this is a, a question I think about a lot, uh, for now, I think that one of the things the city needs to think about is, you know, how do we uh, create indirect policies? I don't, I don't think that um, the, you know, the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs is going to be very successful at creating like a brand new CBGBs or bungle away, like, you know, big nightclubs. You can't just conjure these things up. Yeah, I mean, there's this sort of ephemeral um, je ne sais quoi that, that occurs that, you know, we, we can't, you know, if we had the mix, there'd be more of them. There's something that's, you know, very hard to pin down about why they're successful. But all that said, you, um, you know, the, the, the policymakers in New York City could actually create the environment that would allow these things to flourish. So, you know, one of the things is that, as you said earlier, uh, artists come in, they make a neighborhood interesting, and then they get pushed out because the neighborhood is now interesting, and now people with more capital and disposable income want to live there, 
and so the rents go up, right? That's like the age-old story of New York City and, and lots of other successful metropolitan areas. So, you know, one thing that the city could do is actually prevent gentrification, like limit the ability for luxury condos to be built in certain neighborhoods that uh, are, you know, high concentration of creative, the creative community. Uh, they could create rent caps for artists. Uh, they could do certain kinds of zoning that allows certain kinds of residences or certain kinds of entertainment venues. So there's ways to actually create it such that these things can come and they can exist and then they can do what they want to do in existing there, but they're allowed to and they don't get pushed out. So that to me, um, one of those important things that New York City policy makers need to pay attention to is that a lot of the important functions of the creative economy occur in these informal environments. So it's not dumping money into the MoMA. I mean, that's important, don't get me wrong, but it, it's, there's more to the story. And so part of it is how do we cultivate these, these informal social environments uh, without being invasive, and, and one of the ways is to just set the stage for them to occur. So, I don't know. Is that helpful? It's very helpful. Who's your favorite band? In the whole wide world? In the whole, not, not besides clap your hands, say yeah. I do like them. Um, I would say David Bowie is my favorite of all time. Hmm. And Nina Simone. Okay. Yeah. You didn't get a chance to interview Bowie, did you? No, I mean, wow. Jerry Harrison. That would be the most, I did interview Jerry That's Harrison, right. though. I noticed that. He's Lucky great. you. Yeah, talking heads are wonderful. It's a, did he talk? I mean, did he sort of go into the? I mean, go into the 1970s and what oh, it was yeah. like in New York and how important Absolutely. it was to interact with uh, other musicians and, and other artists. He right. was one of the, one of the most interesting people to talk about with regards to the scene and how important it is uh, as an economic institution. Right. And and how it provided this way. For, I mean, I think as he said it, people don't people don't stop talking about art when they go out. And. You know, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but his point was that the social scene is so important because these artists and creative people are constantly interacting mm -hmm. with each other, you know, even when they're not at work. I mean, heck, you see this. This happened in Silicon Valley. I mean, one of the most important things that Annalise Saxenian, who did a, a great study of Silicon Valley in a book called Regional Advantage, um, why did Silicon Valley become more successful than Route 128 in Boston? And one of the things was these people were hanging out in these informal social networks and in the process they were trading ideas and they were kind of competing in an informal way and this spurred on more innovations uh, and, and sharing of ideas that created even more innovations and that's where Silicon Valley became what it is to us now. I think the same thing happens in New York's economy.